Hi, my name is Mrs. Kinman, and I am a third grade teacher at Hebron Elementary School. So we're here to do a little reading lesson today, so I hope that you are ready to learn. Today is a great day to have a great day. I say that all the time in my classroom, so I hope that you're having a great day today. We're going to get started by just taking some deep breaths, remembering that when we're ready to learn, we're ready to focus, and we are ready to be open-minded. We're ready to make connections. We're ready to um, think about what we already know and apply it to what we're learning. And in order to do that, we really have to have a clear mind. We have to be thinking about the lesson that we're thinking about and not be distracted by any other noises or any other thoughts that come in our head. We wanna kind of push those to the side so that we're ready to listen and ready to learn. So you're probably already really familiar with listening Larry here, and we're gonna be just thinking about all those things we need to remember to be a great listener. We're gonna be a whole body listener. We're gonna listen with our eyes, so your eyes should be focused on the screen right now. You're gonna listen with your ears, so you're gonna be listening to what I'm saying and not listening to any other noises that are around you. You're going to be listening with your mouth, which means your mouth needs to be quiet and not making a lot of noise so that you can really hear. You're gonna listen with your hands and your feet so that they're quiet and that they're still. You're gonna listen with your body, so you need to be facing the screen, facing the speaker. I'm your speaker right now, so you're gonna be facing me. You're gonna be listening with your brain, which means your brain is gonna be thinking about the reading lesson that we're about to embark in and you're gonna be listening with your heart, which means you're gonna be really thinking about what the speaker is saying. You're gonna be connecting it to what you know and how you're feeling, and you are ready to take in that information. So let's just start with some deep breaths so we can think about that whole body listening. I want you to inhale through your nose for the count of three, and then exhale for three. Are you ready? I'm gonna do it with you. In, two, three, and out two, three. Let's try it again. I'm going to hold up my fingers and count. Now exhale. When you get oxygen going to your brain, it's always a really good thing. All right, now we're ready to listen. Let's think about some things just to get us in the right frame of mind. Let's think about what I like to call learning gems. And gem is, is actually an acronym. This is something that a teacher friend of mine taught me many years ago. And I love thinking about this all the time with my students. Learning gems, when we think about our gems, we think about something that we're grateful for, something that we're excited about, something we're motivated to do, and a success that we can celebrate. So I'm gonna share with you really quickly my learning gems. Something that I am grateful for is the sunny, warm weather. It has been so beautiful the last few days and I have really enjoyed it. It's lifted my spirits. Something that I'm excited about is teaching you this reading lesson today. I've been looking forward to it. Something that I'm motivated to do. Hmm, let's see. Well, Mrs. Kinman is a knitter. I really like knitting, and I'm working on a special project right now. So I am motivated in my free time to use that time wisely and to work on my project. And a success that I've had this week, hmm, a success that I've had this week is that I baked cookies that my husband and son really wanted me to make and I got those baked over the weekend. So I would say that that's a success I can celebrate. So I want you to think about your own learning gyms just so that you're in the right frame of mind before we get started today. All right, so before we get started with the story we're gonna be listening to, which is how the camel got his hump, is what is a folk tale? Now, you might know, you might have heard this from your teacher this year already. You might have read some folk tales, or this might be something new for you. So just in case it's the first time you've heard about it, a folk tale is a story that nobody really knows the author. There is an author for each retelling of it, but where the story originally came from, we're not always real sure because it's a story that's usually passed down from generation to generation, and usually it's passed down orally, which means by mouth. So maybe a grandparent told it to a grandchild, and then maybe that grandchild tells it to their children when they get older, and it's passed down from generation to generation. So it's a, it's a story that nobody really knows the origin. Uh, usually we do not know the author of the original version, 
and it is something that oftentimes will focus on something in nature. So the meaning of the story or the theme, the lesson of the story will be to teach us about something and they're using something in nature in order to describe that. So as we get ready to listen to our story, I want you to think about what is something that you know about camels and their behavior? Now, I don't know if you've ever been to the Evansville Zoo. I've been to the Evansville Zoo and they have a camel there. And one thing that I know about camels is they're really big, okay? I also know, and we're gonna see some pictures of camels here in a minute, but I know that camels have a hump. They have a big hump, that's kind of what they're known for, right? Um, something else I know about camels is that they can be stubborn because I try to talk to that camel when I'm at the zoo and you know, everyone always says funny things to it like, hey, what day is it? And things like that. And the camel just looks at you. They're kind of stubborn. They're known for being stubborn. I think that's important. So I want you to think about what you know about camels and maybe a little bit about their behavior. Another thing I want you to think about is what it means to be idle. That's this word right here, I-D-L-E, what it means to be idle. When you're idle, you're not doing anything. You might have heard it used in uh, talking about a car, like a car is idling, it's not moving at that time. So when someone or something is idle, it is not moving. If you have ever thought about what you act like when you don't want to do something, I wonder if you ever use the word, huh, like, huh, hmm. I think that I've heard that before. I've probably said it before myself. Interesting. So what we're going to be talking about after the story is over is what is the main idea? How would we describe some of the characters? And what is the theme of this story? So as you're listening, I want you to think about what is the story mostly about? How would I describe those characters? And what lesson does the author want me to learn? So let's get ready to listen to the story of how the camel got his hump by Rudyard Kipling. This particular version is by Rudyard Kipling. But this is a story that has been told over and over again in many different ways by many different authors. Let's see if our video is gonna load here and we'll watch it together. How the camel got his hump. Now this is the next tale, and it tells how the camel got his hump. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert, because he did not want to work, and besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most scruciating idol. And when anyone spoke to him, he said, hm, just hm, and no more. Presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, Camel, O oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Hm, said the camel. And the horse went away and told the man. Presently the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Hm, said the camel. And the dog went away and told the man. Presently the ox came to him with the yoke on his neck and said, Camel, O oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Hm, said the camel. And the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three, O oh three, I'm very sorry for you with the world so new and all. But that hm thing in the desert can't work, or we, he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. 
That made the three very angry, with the world so new and all. And they held a paviler, and an indaba, and a puncha yet, and a powwow on the edge of the desert. And the camel came chewing milkweed, most scruciating idol, and laughed at them. Then he said, Hm, and went away again. Presently there came along the din in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Dins always travel that way, because it is magic. And he stopped to Paveler and Powwow with the three. Din of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle, with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the Din. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, and he's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot, Phew, said the Din, whistling. That's my camel, for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, Hm, said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only, Hm, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the den. I'll hm him if you will kindly wait a minute. The den rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most scruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the den, what's this I hear of your doing no work, with the world so new and all? Hm, said the camel. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning. All on account of your scruciating idleness, said the Din. And he went on thinking magics, with his chin in his hand. Hm, said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the Din. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, Hm, again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back, that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great, big, lolloping hump. Do you see that? said the Din. That's your very own hump that you've brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday, when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this hump on my back? That's made a purpose, said the Din, all because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating, because you can live on your hump. And don't you ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the three and behave. Hump yourself. And the camel humped himself, hump and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a hump. We call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days he missed at the beginning of the world, and he has never yet learned how to behave. The camel's hump is an ugly lump, which well you may see at the zoo. But uglier yet is the hump we get from having too little to do. 
kitties and grown-ups too oo oo if we haven't enough to do oo oo we get the hump camellius hump the hump that is black and blue we climb out of bed with a frowsly head and a snarly yarly voice we shiver and scowl and we grunt and we growl at our bath and our boots and our toys and there ought to be a corner for me and i know there is one for you when we get the hump camellius hump the hump that is black and blue the cure for this ill is not to sit still or froust with a book by the fire but to take a large hoe and a shovel also and dig till you gently perspire and then you will find that the sun and the wind and the din of the garden too have lifted the hump the horrible hump the hump that is black and blue i get it as well as you oo if i haven't enough to do oo we all get the hump camellia's hump kitties and grown-ups too Okay, let's see. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed that story. It's kind of different. You can tell that it is an older version of a story and there were some interesting words in it. Um, but I hope that you were able to really think about that camel and maybe that folktale explains why the camel is so stubborn. All right, so now let's think, what is this story mostly about? This is the big punch of why we're readers, right? This is something that is so important. No matter what you're reading, you want to be able to decide what is the main idea and what are some key details that support that main idea. So let's think about that now. Thinking on that folktale that we just listened to, what is the main idea of the story? Now what I'm not going to do is pull out one little detail and say that that's the main idea. I'm going to think about what was the main, who was the main character, what did that main character do, and then what was the result of that. So I definitely know that the main character was the camel, right? He was kind of what the whole folktale was centered around. So let's see. I'm going to get my pen here. And I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. Okay, so the main idea of this story is that the camel, let's start writing here. This board is a little different than my board at school. I like it. Okay, so the main idea is the camel. What was the problem with the camel? What did he do? Or in this case, what would the camel not do? that stubborn camel would not work with the other animals, right? So the camel was lazy because he didn't have a reason for not working. He just said, hmm, because he didn't want to. I'm sure you've never done that at home at your house. So the camel was lazy and would not work. The camel is lazy and would not work. So, what happened? The camel was given his hump, right? The camel, okay, the main idea is the camel was lazy and would not work, so he was given a hump. Now, is this really why a camel, a real camel has a hump? No. This is just part of a folk tale. It is explaining something in nature that a camel has a hump, but it's in a made up way. However, it does teach us a lesson that we're gonna talk about in a minute. So let's think about the main idea and the key details that support that main idea, okay? So two key details that support the idea that the camel was lazy and would not work 
are what? What are some details that we can pull from the story that help us to know that this is the main idea? Now my details need to relate to that main idea, okay? We don't wanna just pull any two random details. I really wanna support that main idea. So one key detail is that when the camel was asked to work by all three of the other animals, he refused. So two key details are uh, three animals asked camel to work and he said which is really not even a word, but more of an attitude, huh. All right, another key detail. What about that hump? What's a detail that we would think about that hump? The genie or the den that came, the den was kind of like a genie. When he came, he gave them the hump so that he would be able to work for three days without food. So, he got a hump. So he could work for three days with no food. So see, those key details support the main idea that the camel was lazy and wouldn't work, and that's why he has a hump. Okay? All right. Now, let's go on and think about the characters. Now, when we're describing the characters, we're not necessarily just talking about what they look like on the outside, but we're thinking about what character traits are on the inside. What are some ways that we would describe that camel? Well, when we talked about the main idea, we already talked about one way that we would describe that camel. And we said that the camel was lazy. Right? He just would not work. He was a little bit lazy. He was also, I mean, he wouldn't even talk to the other animals. He just went, huh. Well, to me, that says someone is grumpy. I'm thinking that camel is also very grumpy. Lazy and grumpy. Gosh, those aren't very, wor those aren't very good character traits. I hope that's not how anybody would ever describe me. How about the man? Now remember, the camel and the three other animals were all working with the man to do all of this work to get the world set up. How would we describe the man? I think he was a little bit frustrated because that camel just would not work. So he was frustrated. So the man and the other animals were frustrated and then comes along the den or the genie. And the den came along in that cloud of dust and he was very magical, wasn't he? He was very magical and he came along and he had a solution to the problem right away, didn't he? He knew how to solve that problem and he taught that camel a lesson. So I would say that the den was also a problem solver. That's a great character trait to have. I hope that you're a problem solver too. Awesome, okay. Now we're gonna talk about the theme. Remember when we're talking about the theme of the story, the theme is like the message. What is the message or the lesson that the author wants us to learn from this story? Well, I think we definitely learned that it is important to work hard, right? When it's time to work, we need to work hard. It was not good that he was lazy and unmotivated and uncooperative and grumpy. So the theme would be to work hard. Whoops. Well, does your board ever just not do what you think it's going to do? Let's go back. I forgot I have to turn on my pen. Hmm. Maybe. There we go. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger for you. All right, let's try that again. 
So the theme of the story is work hard. Work hard. When you're just when you're talking about the theme of a story, it's usually just a word or a short phrase. And I think that would be the overall theme of this story is just to work hard when it is time to work. Very good. All right, now let's check for your understanding. Let's see how much you understood the story. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at each of these questions, there's just three of them, and you're gonna give me a finger response. If you think that the answer is A, you're gonna hold up one finger. If you think it's B, you're gonna hold up two fingers. If you think it's C, you're gonna hold up three fingers. And if you think it's D, you're gonna hold up four fingers. So just have your fist ready for me whenever you're ready to respond. Number one, why were the dog, horse, and ox angry with the camel? A, because he was prettier than they were. B, because he stole their food. C, because he wouldn't work. Or D, because he had a hump. What do you think? When I count to three, you're gonna respond, ready? One, two, three, respond. I hope you're holding up three fingers because the answer would be C. They were angry with him because he would not work. Number two, when did the den give the camel a hump? A, before the ox, dog, and horse go to the man. B, after the camel said hump. C, after the camel hadn't eaten for three days. Or D, after the camel worked for the man, ready. One, two, three, respond. I hope you're holding up two fingers because the answer is B, after the camel said hump. And number three, the last one. What did the din say the hump would do for the camel? A, it would make the camel stop saying hump. B, it would help the camel carry heavy loads. C, it would help the camel trot. Or D, it would allow the camel to work for three days without food. Let's respond, ready? One, two, three, respond. I hope you're holding up four fingers. The answer is D. It would allow the camel to work for three days without food. Good job, guys. All right, so if you are watching this and your teacher is going to ask you for a, a word, you're going to tell them that today's word is, is star. And this little star here can help you remember, okay? Thanks for working hard today. And if you want to, to continue your learning and you wanted to do something else with this story, I have a couple of fun ideas for you. You could retell the story in your own words. That's what folk tales are all about. Retell the story in your own words and illustrate it. Draw a picture. Or you could write your own version of this folk tale, choosing a different animal in an animal feature, like maybe why a dog has a tail or why a whale sprays water, any animal in their distinct feature, maybe you could write your own folk tale with that. So thanks so much for learning with me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.